was not. <laughs> not hot at all. It was not. Do not let go. I swear to something, my I won't let go. Okay, you can let go. Okay. In case you haven't been watching, let's get you caught up to speed real quick. Now that we have the chassis completely prepped and the motor in its final resting spot, things are looking good. It looks like we're gonna be making over a thousand horsepower with our twin turbo configuration out of the Ford Windsor. Now, with all this amazing horsepower that we're gonna be making, there's one thing that we're gonna need, and that's good stopping power. Now, obviously, if you do wanna go a million miles an hour, you're eventually gonna have to slow down. So the next thing we need to start looking at is what is gonna be the best brake option to stop our Warthog. My, look, look at my workstation, okay? Essentials, essentials. Cheez-Its, beef jerky, coffee, essentials. Look at, look at this world disaster over there. World disaster. Soupy has no idea what he's even talking about. This was like this when I came in. Lies. It was true. You cannot trust Soupy. Are you ready, Alex? I'm getting ready. God, okay, great. So we got our rotors here. Had to do a little machining on them. The inner circle was a little too small. Milled it out, took about an eighth of an inch off of each side. I got those ready to go. And then I'm getting ready to mount the calipers. Our nice six piston calipers here. Put our pads in. These are the DTC 60s. Hawk's most popular motorsport racing brake pad. It creates twice the friction of a standard performance pad you'd find on a Porsche or Corvette and can stand temperatures above 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. They say these will stop a tank, which is handy because it appears that's literally what this thing is. And then I also machine these out at my shop this weekend. These bolt here on our calipers. Might need a little bit of trimming uh, and that's where we are. Here. I gotta build these uh, panels. So this box area right here is gonna go in this area. So by the looks of it, it's gotta sort of come down like this flat and then come up sort of around here. How are we gonna do this, Jolly? How are we gonna do this? We gotta make a little box. We gotta go around all of our stuff here. This is a big job. I feel like Super just gave you a shitty job. It's okay, he's doing a shitty job himself. Yeah. So. Everything's just a shitty job from this point on, honestly. Now it's time to move on to the exterior details. We're talking about bodywork. We're talking about aero design. All the main features that you've seen in the Warthog and Halo Infinite. Probably a good time for us to call our Halo Infinite team, have them drop all their Warthog wisdom on us once again so we can get the Warthog to eventually look like a Warthog. Well, there it is. I think it's a little different from the last time you guys saw it, right? Definitely more structure and more more bits, more engine, exhaust. To this point, we are mechanically like 95% there. So starting the body work, and one of the things that we were like kind of on the fence about is materials. Because the one at the Peterson was all fiberglass. We are going to do the body in aluminum, but we had questions about the interior bits, like what are the seats in the Warthog, like the dash panels, what are the materials in the dash panels. We know the floor is like a diamond plate aluminum, so that's gonna yeah. be exactly the same, but like, is there any, you know, special materials that like, you know, the dash is made out of? What we'll do, um I mean, basically immediately after this, we'll go and get close-ups of the materials. Typically, the, the artists will lay in materials with, with textures that indicate what the, the, the actual substance is. The gauges in the dash, well, I think in the, in the game, it's like, a, it's like a hologram that kind of protrudes out. It doesn't do that full time. That's, the, that's kind of like a one-off activity. Um, yeah. It's 
something like that. See, the problem is that the background we are, we're unsure of, it's just, right now, ours is just kind of flat, and I know there's a lot more detail in the, uh, in the, in the video game one. It looks like they have a UNSC logo yeah. in the middle of the speedometer and some other like detailed things. Um, and I have photos of all that, of what it looks like in the game build right now, but we'll check with Dan to make sure it's matching right. up with what it's going to look like in the final game too. One question for me, and this is the last one I promise, the winch. And we, we talked about it last time, but I don't know where we where we landed on that. The winch, winch. was, there's provisions for it. There, the horns are still there. So yeah. um, unfortunately, I don't think that we're going to be able to get a functional winch because it's so yeah. large. It doesn't, absolutely doesn't need to be functional. It's just, it's a detail from the front that people are familiar with. So it's purely yeah. visual. It yeah. never does anything in the games anyway. It may as well not exist. But. Oil and a hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it's going to be a synthetic rope on a hook, but like we looked into the fire truck thing, and they weigh like seven hundred pounds, so yeah. that's definitely not a good, good thing. All right, great. Yeah, that's uh, fantastic. Thanks for showing us. This looks amazing as usual. Can you imagine if Hertz got on myself tried building a Warhog? What it would actually look like? This is why we have Alex and Soupy doing it, because they're actually really good at doing it. Now that Soupy and Alex have a little bit more information from the Halo Infinite team, now they really start giving the Warthog some shape. Atlantic, bring the drums in. Has already started the side pod. The next step is gonna do the side oh. pod. Oh, this is the front. Oh, that's the bottom. Whatever, you know. Alex, you don't make no damn sense. Whoa. I've never seen no shit like that. I've never seen you do like that. No. Look at him, look at him. That's impressive. Damn. was completely ready to go. Um, Tony was nice enough to paint them for us. I did the rest of the welding yesterday. I'm gonna take this, put it on there again, then we can get an idea of what our can get an idea of what our wheelbase is so we can better fit the body to the to the chassis. Thank 
making the hood. Making the hood. The hood? Or the gauge cluster. See? It has to sit like this. So now I gotta make it. Anything. Okay. No. I don't you have to drive this way. Yeah, you have to drive <laughs> looking out the side. <laughs> I think I'm gonna put another one right here. You want that on the seat? Way too big. But it looks really good. Warthog is finally starting to look like a Warthog. Man, going from a bare rolling chassis that's been whittling away in somebody's garage for quite some time to actually looking like a Warthog. But we're still nowhere near done yet. The deadlines are getting tighter and closer and there's still more grinding, cutting, chopping, building, wiring, plumbing, everything. Ah! We have the best in the business working on the shop. See what happens next. Time, Soupy. The time for Warthog. Okay, so look down. Walk straight, other, now press X, X. Okay, now, most of your driving is your right analog. There you go, Oop. 